Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about biodiversity. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. Biodiversity is all the different kinds of life one can find in a particular area. So suppose we have a particular habitat. This is the habitat and here we have some trees, we have some shrubs, we have grasses, we have different animals. So all of them are included in the biodiversity. The term biodiversity is given by the sociobiologist Edward Wilson. According to the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources, that is IUCN 2004 report, the total number of plant and animal species described is more than 1.5 million. So actually in our world we have more than this number species but those are not yet described those are not yet discovered so the discovered and described species number is only more than 1.5 million now more than 70 percent of all the species recorded are animals while plants and plants include the algae, fungi, bryophytes, gymnosperms, angiosperms. So this comprise only 22% of the total. Now, among animals, insects are the most species-rich taxonomic group and it comprises 70% of the total total. India shows 8.1% of the global species diversity. Hence, India is one of the 12 mega diversity countries of the world. And nearly 45,000 species of plants and 90,000 species of animals have been recorded from India. Amazonian rainforest in South America has the greatest biodiversity on earth. It is home to 40,000 species of plants, 3,000 of fishes, 1,300 of birds, 427 of mammals, 427 of amphibians, 378 of reptiles and 1,25,000 of invertebrates. Let's talk about the levels of biodiversity. So it could be of different levels like genetic diversity, species diversity, ecological diversity. Genetic diversity. A single species might show high diversity at the genetic level over its distributional range. For example, India has more than 50,000 genetically different strains of rice and 1000 varieties of mango. So you can see that the rice that is Oryza sativa. So the single species sativa. So it has more than 50,000 different strains like mango that is Mangifera indica. It is the single species Mangifera indica. It has 1000 varieties also. That means a single species is showing high diversity at genetic level. Next is species diversity. The number of different species present in an ecosystem and their relative abundance of each of them species is called 
species diversity. Suppose here we have a particular habitat and in this habitat suppose we have 10 total species. So 8 of them are animals and 2 of them are plants. Now suppose each plant species is having 10 members. So one species of plant has 10 members and another species of plant has 10 members. Like that we have 8 animal species. Now among them suppose each species contains 15 members like that. So we can say that the total number of different species as well as their abundance of each of those species is called species diversity. Next is ecological diversity. Ecological diversity includes the variation in both terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. For example, India has a greater ecological diversity like it has deserts, it has rainforest, it has mangroves, it has coral reefs, it has wetlands, it has estuaries and alpine meadows. So it is a great diversity, right? Great diversity in respect to ecological systems or ecosystems than polar regions because we know in polar regions very few ecosystems are present. So it is called ecological diversity. Let's talk about the patterns of biodiversity. It is of different patterns like latitudinal gradients and species area relationship. Latitudinal gradients. So species diversity decreases as we move away from the equator towards the poles. So if this is the world, we can see here, this is the equator and here we have the North Pole and here we have the South Pole. Now, as we move away from this equator towards the pole, it could be the North Pole or it could be the South Pole, the species diversity will decrease. Because actually the equator region has a very good climate, so it supports more species diversity compared to the poles. Next is species area relationship. So Alexander von Humboldt he observed that within a region a species richness increased with increasing explored area but only up to a limit. In fact the relation between species richness and area is rectangular hyperbola. So I think it's better if we consider this graph. So in this graph in the x axis we have the area and in the y axis we have the species richness. Now you can see that from this point to this point that means we are exploring the area. So the area is increasing here right from here to here the area is increasing and as the area is increasing we can see the species richness is also increasing right but here we can see a steep decrease so again we are exploring the area that means the area is increasing but from here we are getting a decrease in the species richness that means from this point to this point we are getting new new species but it is limited 
till a particular point. When we cross this point, we will see some repetition. Right? So, from this point, we are getting the repetition of species. We are not getting any new species. But this occurs specifically in a small area. If you consider a large bed area, that time this will not happen. That time as you move, you will get new new species. And hence the graph is rectangular hyperbola.